Hello, welcome to this week's video, which is all about reviving desire and passion within relationships. How to keep it going um, as well and maintain it. What it's all about and what is the difference between love and desire. Desire and relationships or love sit on opposite ends of the spectrum. On the one hand, we have love, which requires closeness, security, comfort, trust, reliability, dependability, predictability, where on the other side of the spectrum you have desire, which requires some kind of distance, danger, passion, risk, the unknown, and it can also contain some other stuff like jealousy, aggression, dominance, submission, things like that. How do these two affect the other? Well, they kind of can go together and at the same time they need to be separated before we get into desire and sensuality and sexuality and things like that let's take a look at love and attachment this is these are the things we want from love we want that kind of dependability trust um trustworthiness the ability to feel safe pr uh, provided for to a point um emotional kind of contact or there's this kind of um societal norm or this expectation that everything a person wants will be found in the other which is kind of this you know safety security trustworthiness as well as be my soulmate be my best friend be um, my trusted advisor be my counselor um, all of these things be my twin flame be my erotic be my desire everything is wrapped up, be my lover, be my whatever it may be, all wrapped up in the one relationship. This is kind of what is tends to be expected now or sort of like, like I said, this is kind of where we go with things because if you have these things in love but you then have disloyalty, so let's say you go and seek desire elsewhere, well then that kind of affects the love thing and the trust thing and the boundary thing. So there's this seems to be this kind of natural progression to I I want it all within the same person then it solves all the problems it solves all the paradoxes it solves all the conundrums it solves the emotional stuff the spiritual stuff the mystical stuff the desire stuff the sexual stuff it solves everything within the one relationship that's a tall order for anybody to obtain and anybody to kind of provide and any couple to maintain. So how do you do it without infidelity? How do you do it and then keep it going? And then on the flip side of that, desire doesn't ask any of that. Desire asks for wanting to feel alive, demanding, um, aggression, exploration, danger, risk. Um, and like I say, I'm going to come back to it, but to mainly feel alive, to have this kind of connection but non-connection with someone to venture into the unknown which is an archaic kind of desire I keep using the word desire but it's an archaic kind of want within all of us so how do a couple maintain all of this well if you start at the beginning of the relationship you would have been two individuals who came together in that moment where you were exploring each other you were standing, as I said, as two individuals. You were both unknown to each other. There was tension. There was risk. There was a lack of trust. There was a lack of history. There was um, a lack of belonging. There was this move towards this belonging, this move towards this union of two individual souls coming together. And it's in that kind of time zone if you like it's in that era of the development of the relationship where the desire highly likely existed if it didn't exist then there's maybe a separate problem going on but generally there it's you know within the first few months there's this can't get enough of the other person i want we try experiment we do this we do that we go out we meet do we meet do we not have they messaged have they not all of this stuff we are feeling actually quite vibrant and alive with this new relationship or certainly hopefully so Many people when asked, many couples when asked, when do they find their partner most attractive? It's often, or when do they desire them the most or want them the most? It's often when the partner is absent, not there, unobtainable. 
It is also when one asks couples, when do you love your partner the most? You know, when, he, when do you watch them and you're like in love with them? It's like most of the time they say when they're in their element, when they're doing their thing, when they're doing the, the thing that brings them passion, whatever that may be, maybe some kind of hobby, um, maybe it's in the way they conduct themselves at work or maybe it's in the way they are when they're just on their own, when they're singing in the shower, whatever it may be, when they are unadulterated, um, not self-conscious, when they are being free and being them. That is often when most people are very, very attracted to their partner and will often say things like, that's the person I fell in love with. That's why I fell in love with them. That's how I fell in love with them. When I saw that, when I saw them in their element, it's very, very attractive. But what we tend to do within relationships is we begin to, as I say, we begin to merge and we begin to lose our individuality because, you know, why would you want to keep it? You want to merge, but we lose our individuality to quite an extent. Maybe we stop doing the things that we like doing. Maybe we stop being absent from our partner. Maybe we become codependent. Maybe life gets in the way um, and we're, I don't know, ships in the night, but there's no, kind of no mystery. There's no desire um, within that. There's no passion within that. We all get bogged down or both get bogged down with life, money, bills, responsibilities, children, family, um, kind of duty to, I don't know, we have to go to this event, we have to do this event, we have to go there, it's so-and-so's birthday, we've got to get presents for this, we've got to do that, the utility bills need paying. We get bogged down with all of this stuff and we often lose ourselves as individuals first and then after that, many couples start to break down as well under the sheer pressure and the sheer weight of existing as a couple, as a family unit maybe, or as a duo within the realms of what life kind of demands of them. Then what tends to happen in this dynamic is then the eroticism begins to fade. The attraction to the other begins to fade. It's perhaps not worked on so much. Now, there are many couples out there who are able to manage this without even thinking about it. They keep it going and are going to come back to this. But for a lot of people, they get so bogged down with all of this stuff and then there's no more individuality um, and there's only duty and responsibility that the eroticism begins to disappear and then it becomes the kind of like normal, I don't know, once a month or once a week, Friday night run through at the house where you kind of, you know, you're going to have a shower and you go, or a bath together. And you go to bed, you have sex, or you don't have sex and you kind of, uh, is this it now? You know, at this point in the relationship, this is when, as I said, sometimes infidelity can occur. This is when couples can begin to uh, break down. So what is the key here? Well, eroticism is missing. And, like, and some ways to fix it or attempts to fix it may be like, okay, we need to get toys in lingerie and get more exciting in the bedroom. We need to spice it up. Um, and that's kind of a bit of a plaster, a bit of a coverall for it. And it works to a certain point because oh okay well, my partner looks different um we're doing things which are a little bit uh, maybe outside of our comfort zone we bought toys or we experimenting with a couple of things and it can work for a certain amount of time often people will say and it's not just exclusively for men either i've heard women say it a lot as well well i, w I want more sex i don't get enough sex you know my partner doesn't come near me they're always tired they're always this Here's all, the here's all the keys, here's all the clues as to what's going on. Um, normally what people mean, what they really mean by I want more sex is I want the quality of sex back. I want the quality of sex back up. Um, the quantity is kind of like satisfactory to a point, let's up the quantity. Well, okay, it's a little bit more fulfilling, but it's still unfulfilling to a point because the quality's not there, because it's still kind of like your standard kind of run through because all the enthusiasm and the passion has been drained out of each individual within the relationship or one individual within a relationship and they can't quite connect one to themselves and two definitely to the other. So what is happening here is there's the, again, there's this kind of slow kind of like disintegration of the relationship and individuality within that. If 
the sex was improved, if it was more exciting, hence the toys and the lingerie and things like that, if it was more risky, if it was, let's try being, I don't know, let's go dogging or something, and let's, let's try being extrovert and going outside and exhibitionists. And this, this is all an attempt to kind of pick up the get back to the core aspects of desire, which is risk, danger, distance, um, the unfamiliar, the unknown, um, feeling alive. Um, so this is where these behaviours start to kick in and they don't really kind of fix it to a point. It might fix it for one person temporarily, but normally there begins to become some kind of animosity towards uh, one partner or the other. So let's look at eroticism, sensuality, sexuality. What are these aspects about? They're all aspects of desire, if you like, or desires in there within this kind of um, whole sphere of this sexual activity. It depends what philosophy you're looking at, what kind of belief system you're looking at, what kind of psychological system you're looking at, but most or spirituality or mysticism, most of them kind of, you know, it's about fertility, it's about creativity, it's chi, it's life force, it's libido, it's psychological energy, it's, as I said, it's creativity, it's energy, all of this stuff um, is wrapped up into eroticism, sensuality, desire, sexuality, exploration, in short, Feeling alive. Really feeling alive. <laughs> so, how do a couple achieve this? Maybe not so much through toys and lingerie and exhibitionism or swingers clubs and things like that. Although, I'm not against any of those things. If they work for you, great. If they add something... Great. Um, swapping partners is another kind of attempt at that, but this is not where I'm going with this video. This is about between the two individuals because there's something else happening here. Um, to get some of it back, uh, if you look, if you consider eroticism and sensuality, sexuality, things like that, it's all in the imagination. It's all in there. It's connection with the self. I've said this quite a few times to people. It's you can kind of be attracted to someone. You can be, you can find them uh, physically attractive. You can kind of find them their 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 appearance or the way they are is seductive. But it's going to be in there as to how you build it, how you make it. And it's the same with uh, your partner at home and sex within the relationship. It's always in the mind. It's been said for many, 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 many centuries, maybe even. Um, it's your connection with yourself and often the question is asked or the statements are made like um, you turn me off when you do such and such or it you only turn me on when you do such and such and again this is an extension this is an expectation that the other person is going to do something for you that they have to do something for you in order for you to be either turned on or turned off the real question you should be asking yourself is, how do I turn myself off? How do I turn myself on? These are some fantastic questions and quite difficult questions to ask yourself. It's flipping the whole thing off the on the head and it's taking it away from your partner. How do I turn myself off? Am I unable to switch off from my responsibilities? Am I unable to turn off work? Am I unable to get myself out of my tired, miserable zone? Um, do I have any hang-ups from the past which affect me sexually? Have I looked at them? Have I worked with them? Have I dealt them? Do I even like my partner anymore is another one. Um, why don't, and if so, why don't I like my partner? What is it about? How am I able to manage my own sexuality, my own eroticism? You know, do I feel old? Do I feel ugly? Do I not like my body shape? Do I not feel comfortable naked um, anymore? Am I mourning my younger self? Uh, I don't feel so attractive. Um, yes, um, and if you're... Um, female there's hormonal stuff that can go on as well the changing of life I can no longer have children or I've had this one as well um within the room you know I've, I'm a mother now so I don't feel particularly 
you know, erotic or, and also it can happen the other way where husbands or partners tend to go, oh, she's a, the mother of my children now. I view her differently, right? And again, I just go back to, this is in your head. You've constructed that. If you are unable to detach from being a detach from being a parent, if you are unable to detach from your stresses, if you are unable to, unable to detach from the things that you do, you are not going to be able to have a healthy sex life which is full of desire, eroticism and sexuality and sensuality. If you don't trust your partner or trust yourself or even like perhaps your innermost desires, perhaps you like to be dominated, perhaps you like to be submissive, perhaps you like certain kinks and fetishes and fantasies. And if you feel shame around those, you're definitely not going to express them to your partner. So sex is always going to be a bit... doesn't quite hit the mark. Um, and you can easy, and it's easy to go, well, I don't trust them. I don't trust them enough to maybe not... to, you know, kind of accept that side of me. Is it really that or is it you? Bring Always bring it back to self. So what is it, where is it that I turn myself on, off? And how do I turn myself on? How can I do this? How can I turn myself on for the benefit of myself? Am I uncomfortable with my body? Do I not explore my body enough? Um, do I, am, I, am I ashamed of masturbation? Do I think I shouldn't do it? Do I even know how to give myself an orgasm? These are all things where you can look can go oh okay I don't know how to turn myself on that way or oh well actually yes I like to do this and this and this and it you need to also move it away like as you can see not all of it's to do with sex a lot of it's to do with your passions so do I do the passion thing anymore you know let's say maybe you're an, an avid musician or once were or an artist and you've got a ton of canvases sitting in the back of the house but you haven't got time for it or you really like I don't know a certain sport but you gave it up because you didn't have enough time for it because you know family kids duty work all the rest of it but actually that's the very thing that your partner kind of saw you do and went wow that's them in their element. That's them in their essence. That's them unshackled. And that's attractive. That creates a desire. That's the unknown. Who is this wild animal, you know, who's completely immersed in themselves? Because going back to the love and desire thing, love is quite selfless, or is at least it's supposed to be. And desire is quite selfish. Can I have sex with my partner and give myself an orgasm? Can I be selfish in the bedroom? Can I take what I want? Or do I feel bad for it? Um, and this goes for both people. If you are living an unfulfilled life, your chances are you're going to feel slightly dead inside. Which means you're going to feel dead during sex. Um, if you've got blocks and hindrances and things you haven't looked at, things you haven't resolved which drag you down, de-energize you, take the passion out of yourself, again, this is going to affect the erotic side of your relationship, ergo affect desire. And desire is kind of like the cure because that's where you feel alive. So couples who are able to manage, maintain, create this space for desire and eroticism do exactly that. They create and maintain space for themselves space for their individuality they are able to go responsibilities over now for now temporarily put it to one side stresses to one side right now i'm going to do this thing for me um, i'm going to do some self-care i'm going to take that spa or i'm going to go and do that sport i like do that hobby i like um, i'm going to do something for me I, and they are able to put down stuff almost compartmentalize it put it away because it's going to always be there you know, especially if you're, you have responsibilities and duties to take care of, they're always going to be there. You need to know when to separate it off. And those couples who are able to do that, those individuals who are able to do that, are able to experience the erotic, are able to experience desire, are able to experience um, sexuality and sensuality. They're able to shed and release the 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 kind of the shackles and the bound the, the bonds of what's around them and they're able to let it go that in itself is a massive turn on for the self and then you can also embrace your partner and if they're doing the same thing wow magic's going to happen and i'm going to come back to something again that esther perel said which is you know foreplay begins or eroticism foreplay desire begins at the end of the previous orgasm 
you know, you start the process again. And I don't mean you, you jump back in. I'm not talking about jumping back into bed and you start the kind of traditional sense of foreplay. I mean, then it's back to being a couple, being individuals within that relationship, doing your thing. They do their thing. You watch them do their thing. It turns you on. They're turned on. You, you, you make space for this. You make space for that. You know, making love can begin whilst you're washing up, when you're interacting, when you're talking to each other, it's touch, it's caress, it's igniting each other, but also, but most importantly, it's igniting yourself. And if you are unable to ignite yourself, you are going to find you have stale, plain, flat kind of relationship, and then that's going to roll off and affect things in the bedroom. And then you're either going to live like that in this kind of perpetual state of misery and dullness or one of you's going to leave or one of you's going to um you know uh betray and it's going to be based on desire and feeling alive again and of course betrayal is equally the same thing in terms of that's relying on someone else to bring you to it so it's the danger it's the excitement it's the it's the uh connection with the unknown and the separateness from the unknown at the same time with somebody else rather than actually doing it and actually if you don't do it for yourself like i said with your passions and ignite yourself in other areas of your life that affair is going to go the same way as your solid is your relationship i was going to say solid relationship as your, as your relationship is or as your, or as your marriage is it's going to go the same way because you're not doing the work on yourself and here's the other thing which i think is a myth which needs dispelling this kind of myth of spontaneity. Again, when watching couples, talking to other couples who are successful with their sexuality, their sexuality, their eroticism, their desire, they make time for it. They separate out. And this is a, this, this I think is an interesting one because it's like a commitment. And they, it doesn't necessarily have to involve sex, but they, it's kind of the date night thing. And then you can take it further into sex. But it's, um, you know, it's making a commitment. Tonight is our night. Tonight is reserved for us. It's reserved for our desires, our eroticism, our sensuality, exploration of each other. Tonight is the commitment. Tonight is the culmination, or tomorrow night or whatever, is the culmination of all that foreplay beforehand of being individuals separate but together within a relationship, being um, integrated, uh, watching each other, being with each other, expressing with each other, communicating with each other. And then here's the culmination. Here's the result. This is where we, we have this union physically and emotionally, sexually, sensuality, uh, sexually, sensuality, uh, sexually, er, sexually, erotically. Um, this is where we experience desire. This is where we experience connection and at the same time, separateness. But we make a commitment as a couple that this is going to happen. And I've seen couples use this very effectively, especially when they have children or young children. It's like, right, OK, they're off with the babysitter now tonight or tomorrow night. And that's our time. And they make that commitment to each other. And what does that commitment do? Apart from the obvious, um, we have an awful lot of fun together. It says I'm willing to drop all of life's difficulties, all of life's burdens for us, for myself, for us, for you in this moment where we then, we have nothing to worry about. We have complete space and freedom to play out our eroticism, our desires, our sexuality, our individuality and our love all at the same time. It's a massive commitment and it's probably very reassuring for the other person as well. So um, it's a very, very deep subject. It's quite a complex subject. It's one that's often overlooked, but I hope that sheds a little bit of light onto it. It's kind of a surface look at it, but um, until next time, please take very good care of yourselves and hopefully you turn yourselves on by going and doing the thing that you like to do. Ignite your passions. Adios.